what's going on alex here with christian. christian and in today's video we're going to be talking about the seven deadly sins so if you don't know already for instance sin is an action or a type of behavior which is believed to break the laws of god in the old testament we would have specific laws very like tactical specific laws that you have to follow and there were specifically 613 laws in the Old Testament. These laws, the Jews had to follow so then they could get into Abraham's bosom. And then when Christ was crucified for their sins, then they would be able to go into heaven. So they had to follow the 613 laws. And like I mentioned, they were very specific, like thou sh shall not kill, thou shall not steal, all that, all things like that. But then the seven deadly sins are more of bad lifestyle habits. And they are lust, gluttony, greed, slot, wrath, envy, and pride. And if you look in the world, a lot of, if you pinpoint individuals and they're having bad habits in their lifestyle, it will always go back to their behaviors. Like they're probably falling short of committing these, these sins. So yeah, they made a habit out of sin. Exactly. That's what's happened. Exactly. And they're so deep into it, like it is said in the Bible, there is darkness, but how deep is the darkness? Like in their eyes and their soul. Because some people are so deep into sin, they don't realize that they're sinning anymore. They're numb to it. And that's what you see with people like Red Pill, they're sleeping around. Initially, they probably knew that. This is something wrong but now they're so deep into it that they believe their own lies but then there's the opposite of seven deadly sins for lust would be things like chastity for gluttony would be temperance for greed would be charity for slot would be diligence for wrath would be patience for envy would be kindness and for pride would be humility if you're a high in the value individual and you're a right you want you're righteous in a way of you're following christ because all of us have fallen short of the glory of god so we're all sinners but that being said you want to be aware of these things because these could be red flags that you can see in people and you can kind of filter them out you can test them because if they're committing these things there's probably more and Christian, do you want to go over the, the article? Yeah, I'll start, with, uh, I'll start with the last. So today, guys, we're just going to do a basic overview. We're just mm -hmm. going to touch very lightly on each one. We're both going to dip into each other's speech and add to it. And furthermore, we will make future videos where we do go in depth into each mm -hmm. one. So the first deadly sin is lust, which is one that is very prevalent in the West today. Now, how do you define lust? Lust is a strong passion or longing, especially for sexual desires. And as Alex mentioned before, the cure is chastity, temperance, self-control. Now, the Bible speaks about lust, for example, in 2 Timothy verses 2 through 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace. Now, the Bible also mentions lust in the following verses. Job 31 verse 1, Matthew 5 verse 28, Philippians 4 verse 8, and James verses 1, 14 through 15, and 1 Peter verses 2 through 11. Also, 1 John 2 through 16. I'll have these listed down below in the, the article so you guys can take a look for yourself. And as Alex mentioned, the cure is in chastity. Chastity means to abstain from sex altogether to be celibate. If you don't have the strength to control your urges, they will control you. Yeah. And this is what's happening today. And can I just add on to that? When it comes to the seven deadly sins and the opposites that I may mention, chastity, temperance, all that good stuff, a lot of guys, you see all these trends like no fap, this and that, fasting. Guys are they they are unintentionally following god's laws because it's in our hearts but 
they're, they're doing it for self-righteousness. They're, they're doing it in the hopes of later committing to their lust so that can later be more greedy, all that good stuff. So you need to have right foundations. Like guys that are on NoFap, but then they find a girl and they fall into their temptation. They're only doing NoFap so they can get more confidence, more testosterone. So then women are more attracted to them. So then they can manipulate them easier because they're, they're seen of, you know, more alpha, you can say more masculine. Exactly. But it's just a facade. It's just, it's fake. And we see, we see this going on today. Yeah. And that's very true. You see, what Alex is saying is what people do now with all these trends, they have a, it's really just a short term. It's a covering. Yeah. They're basically hiding lust to bring it out later, as Alex mentioned. They don't, they're not doing it with the intention to really wait before they find a good woman and honor her with their body. They're just doing it in hopes of they get a little bit stronger they raise their testosterone, they get healthier. And with that temporary strength, they can then use that to then deceive another a woman to then get self-gain, to receive pleasure for themselves. And see, lust is rooted in selfishness. This is why it's so dangerous. Love is rooted in the other person. When you give to others, you will receive in return because you're doing it righteously, you're doing it for them. It cannot be founded on self-righteousness. This is why when it comes to dating, a lot of guys, when they date, they think, what can I get from her? Most guys wouldn't even be able to tell you what they want in a woman because they're only thinking from a sexual perspective, from through the lens of lust. But when you follow courtship, the end goal is marriage. The end goal is to spend your life. Therefore, you're going to be more diligent in vetting a woman's background and actually getting to know her for who she is and building a bond with her, as opposed to using her for pleasure where you overlook red flags. So lust is a very dangerous pleasure. And, and, to and add to, as we mentioned... Just to add one more thing. Um, going back to the lust, sex today is increasingly disconnected from mating. And for many, it has become a matter of masturbating with someone else's body. And that's, that's what guys are looking for when it comes to, you know, fapping ain't doing it anymore. Let me hold on to it. So then I can get a bigger pleasure out of it later. So, yeah. Exactly. It's just glorified masturbation with another woman's body. Exactly. And quite frankly, if you have no intention of committing to that woman, you're wasting her time, you're hurting her, and you're actually committing a sin, not just unto God, but against your own body. But the Bible says when you commit a sexual sin, it's also against your own body. You really damage yourself. You destroy yourself. It's a very, very dangerous thing. But the cure lies in temperance which is the old English word for self-control, to refrain, to have discipline, to be chaste. And then you can see things for what they are. Lust is something you can control. Lust is something you, all, you only have to say no to. So that's the first one. And control your lust, control your passion, but then you can leverage that energy and really do good for others. Really be a genuine man who cares about serving the community, doing something righteous with your life and living for others, not just yourself. So that's the last. Alex is going to continue on with gluttony. Yeah, so when it comes to gluttony, we have Proverbs 23, 20 to 21. Be not among wine bibbers, among, among righteous eaters of flesh, for the drunkards and the glutton shall come to poverty. So that's another thing. We see in today's society, we have some religions who fast for a period of time so then they can overeat at a later time. So it's, it's not fasting, they're actually feasting. And overeating, like me being in the health industry and really understanding how health works, and then reading the Bible, I'm like, wow, like God really, like the book is written by God because a lot of the things God just gave us principles. I understand the tactics and I understand how these principles work because when you're gl gluttony, which is the overeating of food, just 
indulging indulging in, in food just overeating just constantly eating and eating to satisfy the flesh that's going to lead to disease just laziness body fat when it comes to your hormone levels when you have more body fat percentage a higher body fat percentage you have more aromatase enzyme activity and the aromatase enzyme converts your testosterone into estrogen so you see a lot of guys oh, i want to boost my testosterone i want to do no fap but then they're overweight and they get a spike in testosterone and then they're like oh no fap's not working for me because i feel i don't feel good the reason why you don't feel good is because the testosterone is getting converted to estrogen because you've been overeating and just being lazy, so on and so forth. So yeah, gluttony is a very, like you shouldn't be overeating because it's going to lead for you to be satisfied. You're not going to want to commit to any work. You're going to be lazy. It's going to mess you hormonally. You don't look attractive to a woman. It's going to lower your testosterone levels. And women are biologically attracted to men with nice androgen receptors. So, you know, your shoulders, upper chest, traps, but that fades away because you have a big waist and you look like a block, you look like a square, which women are not attracted to. We as men are attracted to women with curves. That's not a lustful thing. It's just a biological thing which God created within us. When we see guys who, men who are attracted to older men, the reason behind that is because their chemistry in their brain, because they mess it up through watching pornography too much. So they numb themselves and then now they're looking for other pleasures. Hence why they're attracted to other men. So I yeah. also add to that in regards to gluttony. What is interesting is people actually make an idol out of the things of the world. And that also goes for food. Yeah. If remember anything that you think about more often than the Lord, if it's not righteous, if it's not for him, then it's self-righteousness and it's taking from you and it's taking your attention away from God. And people, as Alex is saying, they, they obsess over food, they overeat, they overindulge, and it makes you lazy, it makes you diseased. And in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, it says, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So my question to you is, if you are overweight, extremely obese, or underweight, you're unhealthy. As Alex said, your hormones are unbalanced. When you're in that state, how can you serve others? How can you work hard at your job? How can you labor, honestly? How can you have a relationship in solid condition when you're only thinking about what you're going to be eating later? Or your woman isn't that attracted to you anymore physically because you've let yourself go. That's a man who doesn't have any discipline. And it comes back to the same tool of lust, temperance, self-control, discipline. You need Your habits define you. You're not what you say you do. You are what you do. And when you slowly, again, it's either you can suffer the consequences of regret, which are everlasting, or suffer the consequences of discipline, which are temporary, but then the results is what it will make you and then feel good about yourself because you've done something genuine. So you have to train yourself to abstain. It's no different than with lust. You have to say no. When the urge comes up, every time you turn from it, you become stronger. And it's easier the next time around. Every time you give in to that passion and you indulge, you become weaker and you're pulled into doing it even more so. So it's a very fine line and the cure lies in temperance. You have to have a healthy, a desire to be healthy, which makes you fit to serve others. So that's gluttony. And just to add another thing, going back to the lust, lust doesn't always have to be a sexual thing. What we see in today's world, you being on social media, checking out other people's pages and having FOMO, that's lust of their lifestyle. That's lust of material things. That's lust of their things. You can be lusting for not just sexual thing. It could be even for food. You could be lusting for food. You could be lusting for a, a, a certain type of lifestyle, which will not make you happy, but it's just satisfying your lust. So yeah, just wanted to add that in there. 
Then we go into number three, which is greed. So greed is, it, is the excessive pursuit of material goods. The Bible says in the following verse of Hebrews 13 verse 5, let your conduct be without covetousness, be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be content with the things you have. Now, the word I just said, covetousness, covet. To covet means to have a sh to have or show a great desire to possess something belonging to someone else, which is what Alex said before. You could lust after someone's lifestyle. You could lust, uh, lust after another man's woman. You can pay yourself to another man and think that you're inferior to him because the guy lifts more weights than you or makes more money. Mm. And it's like when you look at the Red Bull community, the way men are deceived, guys with low self-esteem, they're vulnerable, they're looking for answers. They look for answers online because their relationship failed. They had a knowledge gap. They weren't living a traditional lifestyle. They didn't have faith, so they had the wrong woman or they themselves pushed women away. When they're looking for answers and they come across Red Pill, what do they tell them? To be a high value man, you need to make X amount of money a year. You need to have status and fame. And if you don't have that woman, what might? And these men are living a fake lifestyle. They're hiding behind material things to present an image that they're better than they are because they're not humble. And what happens with this lifestyle is they end up coveting material things because they crave power. They want to be better than other men. And what do we all know? Pride always come in before the fall. But those that are lowly and humble in spirit, God will lift up. This is one thing we saw recently with Kevin Samuels, who very famously had his podcast where he'd have women on and he'd tear them down. And he would actually tell guys, you need to lead with your wallet. You need to lead with your status because that's what he was doing. Even though he said to women, I don't date women that are my age, was he was an older man. He was in his late 50s. What did Kevin Samuels do? He'd date older women privately and he got caught out for it. But what happened? God brought him down. The, the beginning of last month, he was on a date with a woman. She was a nurse. He had a heart attack and she didn't even do CPR on him. It is what it is. The man went right down. And we both know he didn't have Christ. We know where he's staying. He ain't going to be doing a podcast down there. So be careful because there are many that will come as a wolf in sheep's clothing and their only desire is to steal from you, tear you down, keep you there with low self-esteem so that they can keep extracting money from you. They can take from you so that they can raise themselves up above you. But when you do that, God will eventually I'm going to allow you to stand for long because you do reap what you sow. So seeking material things from a self-righteous perspective is a dangerous thing. You should only ever want to be successful as a man to provide for your future family and for yourself and to be of service to others and for God. Everything you do should be for God and for people. If you're not doing it for that and you're doing it for yourself, it will fail. Because when you only care about you, it becomes you against the world. But when you look at other people as individuals you can build bonds with and connect with, because we are made to relate to one another, to be in community. And when you see people as those you can have kinship with in unity, you want to genuinely give value to them. You want to actually help them and lift them up with you. That's what a righteous man does. So be very careful the way you live. And I see a lot of young guys pulled into that lifestyle. As Alex said, you go on social media, you see one of these guys, he posts a picture with, a, with an expensive car, with a, with a very nice place. And you compare yourself and think that you're less of a man because you don't have that. But what you don't understand is if you're really living your best life, you don't show your best life online. These men are living a fake life. And do not be tempted by your emotions. See things with your rationale. Greed is very dangerous. So what is the cure? Love, charity, as they say in Old English. This is the cure by which you put the desire to help others above storing up treasures for oneself. Because when you give to people genuinely, those people will see value in you and they will also return the favor with integrity. It's honest. It's not transactional. You've created a real bond. People want you in their life. So don't put material things above people or above God. Anything you want to say on greed, Alex? Yeah. Um, for, for all, so 1 John 2.16, for all that is in the world, 
the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of, of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Mm. So practice charity. Another thing I wanted to mention while I was just thinking is, if you ever heard of the term RES, reticular activated system, when you become a new Christian and you learn about sin, so on and so forth, it's very prevalent. You start seeing it every, every day, but it's hard to avoid it. And it can act, you can fall into the trap of looking for opportunities to sin even more. But or yes, is, it's like your filter in your brain. Have you ever pur purchased a T-shirt in your life? And after you purchased it, you start seeing everyone else wearing the same T-shirt. It's not because they decided all collectively to buy the same T-shirt. It's because your RAS, your, your filter is set on it. So what I recommend is rather than being like, oh, I'm going to avoid lust, greed, sloth, get rid of that. Focus on chastity, temperance, charity, diligence, patience, kindness, humility, and focus on those things. Just like Christ said, seek righteousness and everything else will come unto you because set your heart in heaven. Because he knows when you set your heart in heaven, you're going to focus on the things of heaven and that you're going to see more opportunities of gaining these things in your life. So, yeah, that's my. Mm. Then we get into sloth. Now, sloth is laziness. It's in fact, it's excessive laziness or the failure to act and utilize one's talents. How many of you have a business idea? How many of you have untamed raw potential that you haven't utilized or put into practice? And this is why a lot of men today also have low self-esteem. As men, we have an innate desire to do. Men, we've always been the builders, the founders, the creators of societies. Everything we've ever built, we've done it for our families. Anything our ancestors have ever made have been for us to enjoy. They were thinking long-term. They sweat blood and they sacrificed everything so that us, their descendants, could live a comfortable, peaceful life, have a better future than they did, have more peace, have security. This is what everybody desires for their children, for their friends and their family, an environment where they can flourish, learn, love and grow together. This is what people want. But when you're lazy, you actually have no value. What you're basically doing is wasting your life away when you could be putting that to service of your fellow man and unto God, but you're not doing that. So if you ever feel down or depressed, a lot of the times, unless you've been diagnosed with medical depression because you have a chemical imbalance or you've gone through a seriously traumatic experience, you're just a lazy man and you're addicted to consumerism, your dopamine receptors are messed up because you're getting a hit from social media, and pleasure-based entertainment system that we live in. So again, laziness is something that will bring you down entirely. The cure here is diligence, diligence, zeal. Place the interests, by placing the interests of others above a life of ease and relaxation. As men, masculinity is stimulated through challenge, through adversity. Give yourself something to do. Give yourself a task, something that challenges you. And when you break through, you grow. You become wiser after the experience. You become more at peace. You gain confidence because it comes from experience. And then you have now in your asset new knowledge, new tools that you've acquired that then you can do use to not only better add value to the world, but help build up other men when you have a family of your own. You have more wisdom to impart upon them, to raise them better. Men, we need structure and order in our life. We need routine. This is what gives us a sense of control, that things are okay. We, our need for certainty is met. So it's really important that you work, that you labor hard. You need to, I mean, through the, that pain of discipline, you need to find love for what you do. And even if you don't enjoy it right now, you do it for the love of your family. You do it for the love of God. That's that's my take on 
on, on sloth, on laziness. Yeah, there's a verse about it, Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of the sluggard desired and had nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So next we have, do you, do, you, do you want to add more? There's one of uh, Solomon in Proverbs 6, verse 6. He said, he, he was speaking about laziness. He said, go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Look at the ant. It's working nonstop. And it doesn't do it for itself, does it? The ant works for the, for the you know, all the other ants, for the community. Yeah. When you, when you, are actually in that state of flow. Anybody who's who has a business, you entrepreneur, or even your work, whatever it is that you're doing, when you're really focused and you're engaged as a man, and you're true, like you're really present with what you're doing, there's not many feelings in the world like that, because what you're doing is is righteous. You're working towards something that's bigger than yourself, and you're doing it for others. You're making humanity just a little bit better by your action. That will make you feel like you have genuine value because you're actually doing something worthy of respect. So really, it's up to you. As a man, you need something to do. We are doers. And that is one thing that every young guy needs to get doing. If not, you'll get lost in a world of entertainment, pornography, lust, gluttony, or as we mentioned just before, talking about greed. You end up looking at other men's lives and you covet them. I'm telling you right now, anybody who's really successful, they're not looking at you coveting after them. They're focused on their life because they're taking care of their families. Stay in your lane. Don't compare yourself to other men. So, Alex, do you want to continue on with wrath? So next we have wrath, and the opposite would be patience. So we have uh, Psalms 37 8 cease from anger and forsake wrath fret not thyself in any wise to do evil so you need to be that comes back to the thing about like health hormones so on and so forth if you're an you can say like a leader you're you want to be a leader you want to be an alpha male of the group whatever you want to say You, you can't be emotionally reactive. We as men have to be logical. We need to analyze. We can't get our emotions to fall into it. We need to be logical. Women are emotional. Hence why women can't really be leaders. They're, they're just not biologically built like that. We as men are logical. But we see, what we see today is men being super reactive, emotional. They explode. They're full of emotions. They, they, they get their you know, emotional emotions into it. But when you're a, a leader and something goes down, you don't want a leader that's panicking, he's emotional. No, you want someone exactly. that's calm and collected. Just like our father is like a, is, is what was it? A righteous, it's, it's a tower for the righteous, which the righteous run to because we can like lean on him. We can trust him. He's the rock that we can lean against, that we can trust. It's a house which we can build our house upon. If the floods come and the winds blow, yeah. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and is safe. Yeah. When you're emotional, you run to God because everybody has a moment of weakness, yeah. a moment of insecurity and doubt. Sometimes these things can be due to sin. Other times it can simply be, simply be due to just having a bad moment. But the key is when you recognize that and you refrain, again, you exercise patience and you let that emotion pass because feelings are temporary. Once the waters calm, you see things for what they are, then you make a decision, as Alex said, when you're calm and connected. Again, your family, a woman is not going to respect you when things are going bad and she sees you crying like a little girl when there is power in your hands to change the situation. She's not going to defend you or protect you. She can't. Physically, she can't. Your children can't. And a lot of men, insecure men, when they have problems, 
they will cry and grovel and whine when really they should be looking for the answers. And if it's a situation that is out of your control right now and you just need to let it pass, then what do you do? You just be patient and you let it pass. And when your woman, who is an emotional being, sees you non-reactive, you're strong, you're like the rock, the mountain, you're unshakable. And even though the waves are hitting against it, it's unaffected. Then she knows it's genuine. He's not faking it. He's really strong and cold. She'll respect you and love you more for that because then she can ease into it. She can be feminine. She can be ladylike around you. She can be emotional because you're not going to be reactive. You're going to calm her down. Again, femininity is reactive to what is masculine. So when she sees you showing true strength, she's just going to give you more love and respect. And what do us men need? Admiration, respect. But again, if you're not worthy of it, you're not going to get it. But this isn't something you should do. Oh, I'm, I'm going to just pretend, right? I'm going to pretend I'm strong. I'm going to pretend it doesn't bother me. This has to be genuine. You have to really practice patience when things are out of your control and assess the situation with your logic. What can I do? Is there something I can change? Wait no further more, I'm gonna get it done. If this is a situation that's out of my hands and I just needed to let it, let it pass, then I'm going to wait. Again, self-control, temperance. All of these things we're speaking about today, they all piece together. It's wonderful how God made us that way. The opposite of sin, it works out just that way. So in wrath as well, I have a, a verse I wanted to share. Romans 12 verse 19. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Mm. You should seek no revenge or pain on those who have wronged you or hurt. People's behavior is a reflection of how they feel about themselves. It is rarely to do with you unless you're threatening their life, they're in danger and they're reacting to protect themselves or their loved ones. Generally speaking, most of the times, whenever someone says or does something, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. As a man thinketh, so he is. And also what's, you know, sin, all of these things come out of a man's heart. That's a reflection of what that man has inside of him. You just happen to be in the crossways. So if you've been affected or wronged or you with the wrong woman and she hurt you, family member, a friend, someone has caused you grief, understand that oftentimes they've done it because they themselves are sinful and they have a fallen nature. Very difficult to see in the moment. But when you really pace yourself and you be patient, these people need just as much as love as you do. And sometimes the best way is to love them from afar and just accept. But seeking vengeance, or wanting to get back at people, the Bible is very clear about this. Do not repay evil with evil. Yeah. I, it's up to God. I, ha I had a dream once. You can take it with a grain of salt, but it's basically about leave it on to God. Don't, don't try to fight or whatever. So basically it was a dream of, there was like two scenarios, but they were the same scenarios, but with different outcomes. With the initial scenario, I wanted to have wrath over someone. Okay. But then the second time I left it and I was, I was patient and I left it. But then God showed me into that person's life, how he took care of it himself. And he, he did it rightly because if you do it, you don't know how to actually get to that person. Your emotions take over. But if God takes care of it, God will give him a right lesson, a righteous lesson to teach mm -hmm. that individual. Well yeah, so, yeah, I like that. So that's the thing, guys. If you want to get rid of wrath, hold patience. Let your emotions subside and see things for what they are. And take some time to understand the needs of other people their interest, their life. Most people are broken. They have issues. They have problems they're dealing with. And they may lash out. They may say or do things. But it's just really a reflection of what they have in here, which has nothing to do with you. So even though it's personal because it's done to you, Jesus said, just love everyone. That doesn't mean you have to sit there and take it on the face. You can just distance yourself, pull away or cut them off. But that doesn't mean then you go after them and try and hurt them 
Mm. Because in the process, you weaken your own character because they will retaliate. If you come to hurt someone, even if they've wronged you and they know they deserve it, it's human nature. They're going to want to defend themselves and you make things worse. So you have to learn how to forgive, as the Bible says, and just let go. So then we have envy. Envy is the intense desire to have something that belongs to someone else. Again, similar to what we were speaking about before with greed in terms of money. This is being envious of someone's entire life, their relationships, the way they look, their lifestyle, their talents, their status the things they've achieved in their life really is a reflection of you being insecure. And this is the sign of a weak man. Because when you look at somebody who has more than you or through hard labor and righteousness has acquired riches or has built a very honorable life for himself, you should actually be inspired by that. You should be happy for them. You should be glad. And this is why you have to be careful of who you allow into your life because you're never going to be betrayed by an enemy or be betrayed by a friend, by somebody who gets close to you. This is where this jealousy comes from, this envy. There's a lot of men that will, they have their own insecurities. When they see you do better than them, you lift more, you make more, prettier girlfriend, whatever happens to be, and they don't have that in their own life. Instead of assessing their situation, learning from you, being happy for you and continuing on, they will try and ruin what you have to make themselves feel better for what they lack. This happens a lot in France. I see a lot of betrayal. I've had my side of the business. I've had men and women write in, sending me cases of their girlfriend cheating on them with a guy who was a male friend or even was a family friend or the guy's best friend himself. If you are not careful with who you allow into your life, you have immoral friends or immoral, you engage in immoral relationships, you're going to have people that are envious come in. So you need to guard your heart. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 30, a sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. Mm. How do we cure, how do we cure envy, Alex? With kindness. Exactly. Yeah, so when it comes to, like, being kind is super underrated. It's You can say it's kind of a p- power play because the individuals who envy you and they sh- show you it, they want you to react. It's going back to the don't, don't react. But if, you, if you're kind to someone, it's like kill them with kindness. Yeah, because the Bible speaks about that. When you, when you forgive those, and it says, like, forgive those who wronged you, but when an enemy attacks you and, you and you give them a warm meal, you will heap hot coal over their heads. They're going to be burning with anger. Like, this is someone I hate and they're helping me. They can't take it because they're getting emotional. They want to destroy you, but yet it's unaffecting you to the point where you're actually helping them. That's kindness. Yeah, and I think it's much, you know, when Jesus said, um, if he sues you for your cloak, cloak, give your give him your coat also. Like give into mm. it. And like God, going back to the rat, let God take care of it. Be kind, be patient, and let God take care of it. And you want to you want to be there to actually help people. This is why you're your friendships, your relationship with a woman, it should all be founded upon righteousness. Because if not, you're led astray by your sin. And next thing you know, you find yourself being jealous of other people. Or you, you're not there to genuinely help. You want to place yourself above others, to be seen as higher than them, to supersede them. And that really takes from you as a man because you become scornful and bitter and you're constantly comparing yourself to others. And people that live a normal life, they're not doing that. They're not worried about you. <laughs> they're minding their business. 
And it really ruins friendships, relationships, businesses, when people find out that someone they thought was close to them actually was preying on their demise or wanted to take them down when they had nothing but good intentions to you. And that ruins reputation as well. When people find out that you're like that, no one wants to do business with you. No one wants to hang out with you. No righteous woman is going to want to enter a commitment with you when she knows you're a scornful, bitter man. This is why a lot of these red pill men, because they're pulled into that lustful lifestyle where they're hooking up and they're using women, they don't tell you. But generally speaking, no intelligent woman who's moral, who's chaste, is going to give herself to a man like that, which is why they only get the women that are promiscuous, the women that are narcissistic, the women that simply lack morals and are just out to have fun. So then they turn around and say to you, the viewer, oh, by the way, all women are the same because it's, they only get that quality of woman because they themselves are promiscuous. They themselves are engaging in that lifestyle, so they become that. And that's the only woman they get. And then it makes you become angry and scornful and hateful and you're bitter. And then when you see a man or a woman in a beautiful relationship, they're happy, you convince yourself that it's not real because your mindset has been smashed and completely ripped apart because these red pill guys have caused you to feel envy or jealous of those who are happy and lead a peaceful lifestyle. You've got to get right with God. It all comes down to that. So kindness is the cure to envy. Then we've got the last one, number seven, pride. Alex, you want to go for it? Pride comes before the fall. So we have Proverbs 11, 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. That's the KJV version. But if you use a different version, it would say, but with the humble is wisdom. And the opposite, the cure to pride is humility. What we see a lot of guys today, and they, a lot of guys don't even realize it, they're, they're super prideful in the things that they've accomplished doing no fab, accomplished a certain type of physique. They're like, it's a, they're seeking validation from others. They do things in the hopes of getting something. They walk around prideful in the sense of like pride can really mess you up because you should always be a student. Even though I'm, I have my business, I'm into health. I stay humble. So because I'm a, you always want to be a student. You always want to be learning. But when you're prideful, it's like you don't want to listen to anybody. But, but when I started listening, even individuals who are younger than me, who are older than me, just really listen to them. You can actually get a lot of wisdom with them because you need to realize Everybody, just like you, has their own life and they went through uh, tribulations just like you. And they obviously have something to say. They always, they, even if they have one thing to add to your life. And a lot of guys, you know, they're praying, they're asking for help. Oh, God, show me the way. Show, I need help with this. But if you actually listen, God is working through people to help you. People will actually give you the answers, but because of your pride, you're, you don't listen to them. You just, oh, whatever, I'll do it myself. But if you become humble and really listen to people, get people's advice, kind of evaluate what people are trying to get to you. But you have to be, you st still have to have discernment because a lot of people may want to give you advice, but in reality, they're, they're talking to themselves. Oh, this guy's this, this, this. But in reality, they're having it's like it's a self-projection so you mm. have to so you have to have the discernment as well that's why it's important to have righteous judgment too um yeah that's my take on that exactly because pride pride was the first sin that's why lucifer got kicked out of heaven yeah. it wasn't good enough being god's second hand man he wanted to be just like god he got kicked out with one third of the angels who he convinced the same lie and what happened eve was chilling without Adam. What did he tell her? You can be just like God. You shall be like gods. 
and she fell for it because that's what he wanted. You see, when you're prideful, you really want to bring others down at the expense of you bringing yourself up. That's not what righteous men do. People with a, with a, with a genuine heart, they want to be giving to others. They want to help. They want to see other men and women flourish in their lives, health, wealth, relationships. They want to see them be at peace because that's the loving thing to do. But there's a very good Bible verse because what Alex was talking about just before, like you don't want to boast. Jeremiah 9, verse 23 through 24. Let not the mighty man boast of his might, but let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me. The only thing that matters is, do you know God? If you really want to boast about something, boast that you, boast that you know Jesus Christ. Boast that you know God. That's it. Anything else doesn't matter because everybody's trying. But if you want to be every, you ever want to be proud or happy that you've achieved something, the only thing you should ever be glad to is that you know him. But even then, you're saved by faith and grace alone. So it ultimately has nothing to do with you. You're thankful for what he did for you. That's it. Exactly. And so, to add to that, Jesus Christ had all these attributes of chastity, temperance, charity. The, the main one was humility. He, God himself, came down in flesh and walked around, around among us. And he humbled himself, like, to the point of, like, people were asking, are you God? Or what should I do, good, good sir? And he's like, no one is good but God. Him knowing he's known as the good shepherd. He never boasted about him being God. He washed the feet of his disciples. He showed how to be humble. He, can, he is God. He can do whatever he wants. But yet he came down, humbled himself, died for our sins. He didn't have to do that. But he did because he humbled himself. Amen. Yeah. So that's really, those are really the seven deadly sins. Even though the Bible doesn't specifically mention this is a deadly sin. Out of all the sin that you see habitually and all the other sins that come with that, they're mainly categorized from what we see in those seven. That's really where it comes from. But one thing the Bible does say is this. In Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, it says, these six things the Lord hates, yes, and the seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devices wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord amongst brethren. Galatians 5, 9, 5 verse 19 through 21 says, mentions several more. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, immorality, purity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, caressing, and things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's giving us a warning. A sinful lifestyle, it leads to death, ultimately. Because you're not, you're not under God's protection when you live that way. And it's the battle for the flesh. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Against powers, against principles, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In Ephesians, it speaks about this. Flesh or spirit, you choose. Discipline or regret. Exactly. I just wanted to add something you, you see a lot of guys envy other people. They envy, you know, they have nice things. But what are you actually envying? The nice things? Or are you envying? Because you need to realize all the fun times you've had, you know, your relaxation, they didn't have that. So what are, are you actually envying? Because if you're envying that whatever they have, you should be envying their discipline. The, the, the things, the seven things like chastity, temperance, charity, you should beware of false prophets. You shall know them by their fruit. Like 
righteous guys would have good fruit. So you should be envying if you are the right things because a lot of you, people envy the wrong things. They envy the lusts of the flesh, which are, you know, the materialistic things, but they don't envy the, the you can say, lusts of the spirit, which doesn't really make sense, but I don't think that's a term, but you should be trying to accomplish these things and then you, sh you should, and you'll notice you actually don't want it. You don't want these things no more. You, you'd rather use, use that income or whatever you have righteously. Exactly. Yeah. The Bible does, in Galatians, it does speak about that. The marks, the fruits of the spirit, the mark of a righteous man. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faith, temperance, long-suffering, and humility. Long-suffering is all English for patience. If you have these nine, nine things, you're a righteous man. And when you study someone, even for you guys when you date a woman, look for these things in the character. When you're friends, business associates, family, people you choose to invite into your circle, do they have this? Exactly what Alex said just before, as Jesus said, we'll know them by their fruits. If it's an apple tree, it's going to bear apples. So if they tell you, no, this is a lemon, but it's an apple tree, then they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a good person, but then they have a track record of, I don't know, domestic violence, whatever. You, they're lying. Now, it doesn't mean they're an evil person. They're sinful. They still need love. They need help. They need to be put on the right path, which is Christ. However, the Bible does warn us to stay away from those that are unrighteous, to stay away from the wicked and evil. Corinthians 15 speaks about this. Bad company corrupts good morals. It's a warning. Because you see, a lot of people see Christianity as kumbaya, it's lovey dovey. You don't you have to be tolerant. And that's not true. Jesus said, I came to bring the, I came to bring a sword. And he and he pierces through all of those lies. You should be bold in your faith. You should be forward with people in a calm but yet well put together manner. You display yourself accordingly. Mm. You say things for as they are. And your fruit, the fruit that you bear, is how people will define you and how people will judge you. That's it. That's what I have to say on that. And when it comes to pride, for the, all the atheists out there, if you were to, I think I mentioned this before, go to them. Let's say in your world, Christ was real. Would you still accept him? They're, they're, they're like still no so you're telling me you wouldn't accept someone that died for your sin and you have a gift a free gift to go into heaven as a gift you're you're struggling with pride that's not a faith issue that's a pride issue and a lot of atheists and a lot of religions out there they seek self-righteousness they're like they're so prideful they're like let me they're doubting God in what he did. Let me do these things to get into heaven. Let's say you do get into heaven based on your works. Are you going to be jumping around doing backflips and saying, me, 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 I got in here because of me? That's pride. So pride is a huge one. Pride is the first one. Pride is the deadliest one. Yeah. That's exactly what got, as I said before, that's what got Lucifer kicked out. Yeah. So whenever you have a moment where you start looking down upon others or you feel like I'm better than people or you achieve something and now you calm down. <laughs> Don't let your emotions tempt you. Always make decisions based upon principle. So really that's what I have to say. I'm concluding my side of the things now. If there's anything else you'd like to add, Alex? That's pretty much it from my side. So really... Guys, that's it today. These are just a, a basic overview of the seven deadly sins. And next week, we'll be having a guest on who will be sharing his testimonial of how he came to Christ. So I think you're all going to really like that. And if you all have any video suggestions, be sure to put it down in the comment section and we will definitely plan that out. Amen. So yeah, that's been Alex from my side and... Christian. Christian. And also, yeah. we'll have our respective YouTube channels linked down below in the description as we have done in all the previous videos. So you can learn more about 
Alex's side of the things or mine. And any questions, again, comment down below and we'll see you guys in the next one. See you later. Peace. God bless.